Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune. Lee, I don't want that up. For the first day of June 2020. There they are. I was looking for my notes. <laughs> I jot everything down for the astrology and the esoteric influences that I talk about before we get going on the reading. And so it's like, well, where is it? <laughs> it's hiding. Anyway, um, I did the esoteric influences for the week. They're up on the blog over at imsteppingaside.com. It's called Stepping Aside. It's a, if you haven't been over there, it's a witch and herbalism blog, I suppose you could say. Um, but for each week, I do these esoteric things, which uh, is more than astrology. There's a, there's some lunar influences. There's numerology for the week. There's there's uh, runes for the week, and then there's I I do a. a uh, each day I do a human design uh, chart and a, just a little interpretation of that. Uh, human design is a really cool uh, type of, of divination tool, similar to astrology. Uh, uses planetary positions, but aligns them with the I Ching. And so it's, a, it's cool. I like it. And that's why I, I put it in there. It's just very cool. But anyway, I thought, you know, why don't I just use those when we talk about you know, the, uh, the what's going on in the heavens. <laughs> Why don't we use that instead of just mainly astrology? Because it was getting kind of, I was sort of getting bored with it. So anyway, I just find this other stuff a little more interesting. But so let's take a look at uh, today's a one energy, given it's the first of June. We're in a six month, so higher self there. But uh, and balance and shared purpose and shared direction. So maybe June we'll start to sh see a shift toward a little bit more fundamental unity amongst people. Uh, June can be, you know, great for that. You know, we're starting to go to summer. The weather's getting better. People's moods improve. Although right now, I'm not so sure that's going to happen for, for, for a long time after the events of last week. So, and the protests are going on. So I, I don't see an end to those anytime soon. Uh, I mean, I just don't. Uh, but today, with this one energy, you're going to want to express unity with others. Offer support and assistance if you can, but do so safely. Uh, I'm glad to see protesters are out in masks, but I hope that's enough. Um, this is scary times for this to be happening, but it is what it is here. You know, I don't know what else you do. If you don't speak out over what happened to, to, to George, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we're heartless if we don't. So try not to loot, though. That's, that's sort of defeating your purpose, you know. But I don't know. I think we need to speak out. Uh, Uru's is the uh, rune for today, um, That not the one we'll draw here during the reading or anything, but but from the esoteric influences. It's the second rune of the Elder Futhark, and and it's it, today we're going to experience maybe some new thought patterns forming. As perceptions continue to shift, I don't know how you can look at what's happening now and not have that happen. It, you, if, if you have any humanity in you at all. There should be some new some new stuff coming up for you here. There's new things to think about and consider. The effects of your actions. You know, have you done things lately? That's another one. Have you been doing things lately that are harmful to other people? You know, if you have, you need to rectify it. Uh, let's see. Health issues continue as the virus is yet to be contained and businesses reopen. However, with the influence of Urus, we can arrive at a unified understanding of what's at stake. Alignment and shared understanding and truth promises a better outcome than dissension and denial will surely create. Urus, remember, is a water element rune. It's the uh, primal uh, force behind the forming force. So it's the creative presence behind the manifestation of choice. Kind of the difference, you could, you could even think of it as the soul versus the personality or ego. The soul, if, if we're allowing the soul to influence us here, then you could say that that's the Uru's force in a sense. Or you could draw it back even further and bring it back to the creator itself and have that be the forming force. But like we said, moons in Libra, we're going to seek peace and harmony today, whether you're alone or safely with others. You know, uh, get outside if you can. Uh, you know, it, it, like I say, it's springtime, summer's approaching, and uh, the flowers are out. And, and uh, so it's a lovely, a lovely place to be if you can, if you can do so safely, you know. 
Um, but you know, <laughs> try to if if the, the if the alignment isn't in and and the balance that you're achieving with the moon and Libra isn't with someone else, try to find some balance within. You know, it's easy to get ahead of ourselves. It's easy to let ego take over and send us in a direction that is just counterproductive and is hurtful to other people. If that's happening in your life right now, uh, whether it's, you know, collective, a collective sort of thing going on vis-a-vis -vis the protests or dealing with the, the effects of the pandemic, because, yes, we still have one. That's still going on, right? If that's what it is, well, fine. But if it's something more personal in nature... You got to strike a better balance. Use the Libra energy to do that. Get above the fray, see the bigger picture. And if you need to apologize to somebody for something you've done, please do it. Allow that reciprocity to happen. All right. Allow the allow that other person to know that 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 you actually care about the dumb thing you just did. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Libra's a complicated, I'm a Libra, so I know this. Libra's complicated. It doesn't have to be, but it, you're talking about the pivot point, right? And you're talking about, you know, not just stuff that's going on within, but your interactions without as well. And so it's a, it's a, it's a dual task we have when it's Lib the moon is in Libra or your sign's in Libra, basically. So... Anyway, um, quickly here on the human design stuff for today, uh, the channel of awareness is active. When, and what that means is that human design, if you'll take a look over there, you'll see this body, right? And then in front of them, you're going to see some, some triangles, right? And, and basically, they're called energy centers. And the, hum and the, the I Ching uh, uh, numbers, if you will, the, the different hexagrams, they're put along all these different triangles, Okay starts with the head and ends up down at the root. It sort of follows the chakras, but it's a nine base system versus a seven. And so consequently, there's a little bit more going on. When you have one triangle connected to another one, you now have an energetic channel that's open. It takes two gates and, and it connects them. And the gates are essentially the different I Ching hexagrams. And so you're going to have one hexagram attached to another one. And it's going to get even more specific because it's not only the hexagram number itself and the meaning there, but the line on the hexagram as well. And so there, there, it's, it's just an amazing thing. And with the channel of awareness that's open, this is the design of the thinker. So you want it to, uh, to, to work in your favor so that you avoid susceptibility to propaganda. Sun's placement is telling us that. That's in gullibility, especially if the protests are still occurring today. You know, we don't, those that are trying to assess what's going on do not want to, you know, be gullible and think that it's one side versus the other. It's a little more complicated than that. And what the, the attorney general for the country is saying is nonsense, at least in my opinion. That's not what's being done. And so, and it's not who it is that's doing it. So, you know, I'm sorry about that, but it appears that it's actually somebody else. So, you know, we need to be careful there. Understand that progress doesn't necessarily take the uh, straight and narrow path, but it must at least begin somewhere, which reflects the Earth's position right now and, and, and its alignment with the I Ching hexagram of gratitude. With Mercury's placement at gate 52.1, which means the 52nd hexagram, the first line of it, counseling that we need to think before we speak. If the situation appears untenable, then it may be no further involvement is possible. And that's the moon's placement. Uh, <laughs> and they call that one, that particular one, terminal disease. Well, so you can see, it's like, well, you can't go any further with that. It's terminal. So... Expressions of altruism, Venus's placement, may focus others into a higher path today, providing the structuring necessary, the Mars placement, for profound change. And with the channel of concentration active today as well, we have the determination to exceed all expectations. But again, it's where we place our focus. You know, is it going to be on ego or is it going to be on the higher self messages coming through? You know, every time, oh, I'm sorry, there I had a little earthquake with my, not not really, I did it, but, you know, self-imposed earthquake on the laptop. <laughs> but anyway, we've got, we've got, we've still got six planets in uh, uh, 
retrograde right now. And and it, what it does, in my view, is create a loosening effect, a loosening of perceptions where we can start reflecting and, and rethinking the things that we're doing. Uh, I haven't checked when Mercury is going to go retrograde, retrograde again. It, probably not till maybe first part of August. I'm not sure. I'll have to look. Um, but right now we've got Juno, Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, Venus, Pallas, all in retrograde. And it's interesting when Saturn and Jupiter are, you know, you've got the planet of contraction with, with uh, uh, Saturn and the planet of expansion with Jupiter. And so when they're both in retrograde, you know, you're doing a lot of reevaluation of structure and, and, and how we express ourselves in the world and, and with one another. So it's a lot of inner reflection going on, particularly in this 22 year which is very profound. It's it's like the 11, it's a master number. And so we're talking soul level change with the cosmic builder number of the 22. Uh, and whenever we have that, you know, whether it's on a day or whether it's the year, uh, lots of interesting things can happen. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the real soul manifestation experience. And I just think that a lot of things are coming out now that give us a window into the things that we need to transform. And so I, I just suspect that we're going to need to pay attention to the numerology and all of it, you know, going forward. Um, sun square Mars, it sun's in Gemini, Gemini right now. Square Mars, though, difficult interactions could happen today. Alienation could occur. So be really careful. Diplomacy and tax is going to be required so that you don't alienate other people. Uh, Seska square Jupiter, again, Jupiter is in retrograde. Uh, Self-expression could be inhibited today, making the achievement of your goals difficult. Uh, Reevaluate to see if you're even on the right path. You know, sometimes things happen so that you can then reevaluate and see if you need to be doing something else. And it could be with this particular aspect, uh, Sun, Seska square Jupiter, retrograde, uh, that that may be what you need to do. Venus square Mars, Venus is also in Gemini. Uh, passions are high today. Judgment can be affected, sort of aligning with, you know, Sun square Mars. Uh, <laughs> so, so we're squaring Mars today. <laughs> let's see. Mars uh, in Pisces, avoid victim-like behavior. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, Saturn is in Aquarius. Uh, also Saturn uh, uh, retrograde. Relationships with others are re-evaluated re today. Uh, consider the unexpected, <laughs> because you never know. You know, we're seeing uh, police officers take a knee with protesters. We're seeing police officers uh, march with protesters. Uh, we're seeing uh, uh, officials. I mean, Vice President Biden was out there while, you know, what's his name's hiding in his bunker. Uh, but Biden's out, and he's talking to people and uh, taking a knee, and he's and he's visiting with people and listening to their concerns. So I don't know. Use your best judgment there, I guess. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, par, uh, Pluto in Capricorn retrograde. <clears throat> retrograde. Again, reevaluating re partnership issues. I really think that that's at the heart of this, particularly even at the heart of the 22 year and the cosmic builder, because what are we really building? Is it a house? Is it a barn? Is it a fence? Or is it the relationships we need to preserve with one another? Is it that? Or do we let it all tear down because of, uh, because of, of, of someone's own ego and personal desires? Yeah. I suspect that that's really what's going on here. And I think we're going to find that out. So anyhow... I think we've done enough damage for one for for the beginning of this. So let's go ahead and get and take a look at the cards. And from there, we'll look at the rune for the day. And uh, we will uh, and maybe it'll be Urus. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? We'll align with the one from the esoteric influences. Otherwise, we'll see what else we get. And we'll close out with the geomancy rune. So I think the cards are shuffled enough. And let's go ahead and take our first three and see what we have. If we have to add more. We will. If you've been here before, you know I take the 13th card each time just for randomness sake, just here. Any other reading, I just shuffle and lay them out, but I don't want to I don't want to interfere with it. I don't want to have anything of myself in it, so that's why I'm doing it this way. So, And if it's your first time here, welcome. Thank you so much for coming by. I hope you click subscribe and come back and join our little tarot and rune family and uh, explore how all of this impacts our day and our life and our interactions with others. So... 
here we have the four of swords and no he's not dead <laughs> but it appears he's in a church and he's laying down and he's, he's letting his mind and his thoughts come to rest come to balance four is about structure but it's also about respite and and reestablishing again we're in we have got a bunch of planets in retrograde of course if it were mercury retrograde it would be even more interesting wouldn't it because the, the swords are the air element. They're our intellect, they're reason, balance, justice, fairness. Interactions, communications, all of that, messages. But you can see how what we're doing here is the, the uh, knight is back from his, uh, wherever he's been, and he's going to take a nap now and kind of rethink things, let everything come to kind of ponder what went on and figure it all out and kind of rehash it in his mind and put things in their place. And, you know, it's just what we do. You know, we have to. If we don't, you know, we just keep the mind running all the time, then, you know, you never have time to reflect. So don't fear the, so don't fear the retrograde, in other words. <laughs> Retrograde's cool. You know, it's like, oh my goodness, Mercury retrograde. You know, it gives you, you know, instead of being afraid of communication, reevaluate it, rethink, stop and think before you speak, right? Just do that. Think about what's going to come out of your mouth before it comes out of your mouth. We don't need to fear it. We just need to use the energy to become better. I don't know, you know, to, to learn to function better, maybe. I don't know. My cards don't want to cooperate today. They're a little bent. I need to bend them back. Well, we had this last week, Playful Struggle with the five of wands. You see, nobody's hitting one another. This is all out there and they're having a good time, really. There's some change involved, maybe. Protection involved, definitely, because they all have humongous stabs. You know, that's the suit of wands, it's the fire element, it's, it's will, creativity, the spark of life, all of that. And here with the five, we're talking the pentagram and safety and change and protection and all of that. So, you know, here they're just figuring it out. You know, nobody's getting hurt, but people's wills are being expressed. You know, that'll either continue that way or it'll, might, it might escalate. Hopefully not, but it might. So we'll see. Let's see if the, the third card escalates any of this. Because we kind of have, kind of have, you know, some peace here in solitude and respite, and now we're, you know, getting into it. But maybe not, maybe not. We'll see what this card says. Maybe it'll give us some more. Well, it's the Empress, so no. <laughs> I love this card. It doesn't matter what deck it is, really. Findel has a beautiful one. The Toth Tarot has a beautiful one. This is just Rider Waite, but, I mean, look at her. She's sublime, isn't she? You see her crown. Let's take a look at that. See if I can put my elbow down here and keep this from moving. We see her, her, her uh, right over here, you see her shield. And there you're talking, you know, it's, it's in the shape of a heart. And there's Venus, the glyph for Venus on it. So we're talking, um, well, we're talking beauty and, and uh, benevolence and kindness and love, a loving heart, a kind, loving heart. She's in an interesting uh, throne, really. It's more of a, almost like a chaise lounge in a way, the back part of it, doesn't it look like? Let's see, what has she got here on her, are those roses? They look like roses on her dress, on her gown. She's got her scepter in her right hand. She's the Blessed Mother. She is uh, the one that gives balance and sensibility to the Emperor. Uh, without her, he does not have balance. She really is reflective of the Great Mother. Uh, the one who breathes out life, and we all rest in the Great Mother's breath until she breathes us back in. So, again, just all symbolic of the ebb and flow 
of our existence in tangible form. You know, we're everywhere. We're not just here. We're other places too. We're other in other experiences, other bodies, other, you know, whatevers, <laughs> you know. And uh, while we're doing this, um, we're just adding more to the collective Akashic record that the creator wishes to know. Now, uh, I just like the, the, the visual of the idea of the great mother drawing in the father principle, creating the world, breathing it out, and we rest in her, in her breath until she draws us back in. So let's put her in the center, though. With the Empress, when we talk about the mother principle, there's got to be some kind of guiding principle for us all. Uh, if you take a group situation, you could have a group of people where a leader emerges. And hopefully the leader is benevolent and, and they carry with them the collective memory of the group, of the tribe, basically, so that they can then guide the group or guide the tribe in a good direction, one that remembers who they are. Because the second you don't, you introduce someone new, it's like, oh, they want to do all these new things. Well, that's fine. You can do that. But with an eye to what is. So maybe they want to do things that doesn't comport with who the, who the tribe is. So maybe they can't stay in the tribe if they can't settle down, right? Well, Maybe that's what's happening here. Maybe they're working something out here. Maybe it's the struggle of will. Maybe we need time to think about it. To allow our thoughts to settle and maybe loosen a bit so that perceptions can shift if they need to. Again, we, we have all these wonderful <laughs> retrograde planets right now having to do with, with different aspects of self that maybe need to have the perceptions loosen a little bit about. Uh, you know, with Saturn, you're talking, well, you're talking our fundamental relationships, uh, or, or actually, with Saturn, you're really talking about uh, restructuring the foundations of our lives. You know, Saturn is Kronos, it's Father Time. It's the dweller on the threshold. And so, it's almost like it's this moment of truth for all of us and in, in, in terms of our life expression and who we are and who we are to one another. Because we can't forget the fact that when we're not in these bodies, collectively, we're one energy. There may be individual natures within that one energy, and I don't doubt that for a second. But at the same time, we also understand when we're in non-physical that we're, not, we're in non-physical together. We can either be of a higher consciousness that creates and sustains life, or we can be of a lower consciousness that does not. Here, it translates into service to self and service to others. And the interesting part about service to others is you feel taken care of within that. You feel that your needs are met within that because of the reciprocity within that whole structure. Service to self, on the other hand, you only can think about yourself. And if you do think about someone else, it's in service to what you want. It isn't because it's for the greater good. So you can see that shift. We come here, we come into tangible form. We risk thinking only of the self. Enter the empress, and she suggests, well, no. There's issues of heart, of family, of community, of love and togetherness and shared purpose and shared direction. So that the earth goes on. So that the symbiotic relationship that we have with the earth while we're here in form, linking soul with the earth, the energetic structure of the earth, which is alive, and, and not because there's trees growing on it. This is an energetic body. All of the planets are. They're energetic bodies coalescing around an inner crystal of source presence from which then life grows or is planted here, basically. That's what happens. It gets planted here. All of us got planted here. 
genetically manipulated to be what we are now over the course of billions of years. Didn't happen in six days. The earth is not 6,000 years old or whatever that silly number is. It's billions and billions and billions. We may not see all the evidence of everything, but that could be frequency related. We rise to a different frequency, a higher frequency, and suddenly things might start appearing that we can't see because we're not vibrating on that level where it exists. That's what happens during ascension. That's what we're in right now. Things are ascending. Things, the frequency is rising. Yeah, we've got a lot of conflict right now, but what do you think can happen from that? from all that truth that's being expressed. Have we finally reached that tipping point where we can stop all of this and we can start to come together in shared purpose and understand the manipulation that's going on of all of us? This is less about the struggle within and the manipulation from without. Because I think even people we think we're at odds with, we have more in common with than we do than we think we do. Seriously. Even the ones that we, we find to be completely vile, right? Completely vile. You'd be surprised how much you really do have in common with them. Now, there might be some real striking differences, but how many are there really? You know, with the reading, we're talking not letting our will get out of control to think. Use the channel of awareness mentioned in the human design reading to, to a section of, of the esoteric readings here to, to carefully consider and analyze what's really going on. Is it what it seems or are there more things going on under the surface? I'm experiencing something right now in my personal life where clearly things are going on under the surface, sabotaging the collective nature of something. Which is not going to work, but whatever, you know, whatever. But it's the lies that get told, the manipulation that gets, that, that, that it happens, that then nudges people into making decisions and choices that are ultimately counterproductive because they didn't see the bigger picture and they weren't sensitive enough to understand that they were being manipulated by vested interests of someone else who's not being honest about that, lying about who they are, right? These are the kinds of situations that we're asked right now to rise above, take a look at, whether it's the systemic racism and in, in terms of the, the, the way justice is dispensed in this country, whether it's something on that level or it's something in your personal life. You gotta wade through something today You've got to think about it. You've got you, you've got to rest your mind. You let your mind come to a rest, come to a still point, take a step back. Empaths do this all the time. We have to. Where we step away from the fray, we become, you know, the seven energy. You've got the, the three and the three to make the scales, and you've got the pivot point, so it looks like scales is, is, is one depiction of the seven. Well, right now, <laughs> we need to be that, that center point. We need to step back from the fray, take a look at what's going on, whether it's simply the stuff that's going on in our world, or again, if it's happening in your personal life, something is wrong. Something is amiss, and, you've, it, and, and it's because you haven't seen it. You've remained stuck in one level of perception, and that's all there is for you. So you have to step back so you can see the rest of it. Otherwise, I don't know how you, I don't know how you achieve any kind of understanding. Because if someone's manipulating you, you need to know that so that you can take steps to stop whatever's happening. Because it could be really difficult for you otherwise, right? It could be difficult and you don't need that. So, so again, find some level of balance. Achieve some serenity by going to that place where you're stepping away from all of it and you can see more clearly. Allow spirit to inform the process with Ansu's, Odin's rune. Fourth rune, I believe, isn't it? Rados fifth, yeah. Fourth rune of the Elder Futhark.
we see Lagu's twice in it. I'll draw that for you so you can see it. I like to share what the other runes that you might be. A lot of these runes, other than Isa, maybe Kenaz, you know, you're talking a bind rune, basically. And with Ansu's, we're talking the voice of spirit, you know, spirit communication, allowing higher self to inform. Look, the body is an illusion. I mean, we should know that. It changes all the time, doesn't it? I have a nurse friend who, <laughs> I didn't know this, because yeah, we were talking about masks. You know, she's just got a, when I see her, she's just got a regular mask on. She's not, doesn't have an N95 when she's going out and about just shopping and stuff, you know. But she explained to me, well, no, the N95s, because we don't have any N95s. She said, well, here's the thing about that. A couple times a year or once a year or whatever, we have to get refitted for them. You actually have to get them to fit you. <laughs> so otherwise they don't. She says, and the thing is, is our faces change throughout the year. You know, you might gain weight, you might lose weight, the tone may change. So you have to keep getting it done. I didn't know that. Did any of you know that? I didn't know that. But she told me that. I thought, well, that's interesting. Something new I, I didn't know. Well, anyway, here here is Ansu's. And what we have is this. Lagu is twice, which is flow. Again, the flow of spirit. Okay. We aren't these bodies. We are a soul. And it's just, now granted, it's just a smidgen of it that's in the body because that's all it takes, right? Soul energy is that powerful. The rest of it's doing its own thing somewhere else, like we said. But The voice is powerful. You might as well listen to it. You might as well let it guide your path because ego really, I mean, if we look at what's going on right now, ego doesn't do it. Ego hides in the bunker, shuts the lights off on the people's house, turn them back on. Come out of your hidey hole. See what's going on. Don't hide. No one's going to come get you. Oh, they might be out there, but you need to listen. So come out of your bunker and pay attention. If you can, maybe you can't. Maybe you can't. Maybe the rumors are true. Maybe he can't. Not because of his attitude or because of any other reason, but capability. Maybe he's not able anymore. Don't know. But I look at what's going on and the way he behaves, and I have to wonder, are the doctors true? Are they right? Are they accurate about this? I mean, if they're going to go to all the trouble of diagnosing somebody they haven't seen, which is kind of a no-no, it doesn't matter what kind of specialty, whether it's just a, a GP or an internist or a, or a cardiac doc or, or anybody. doesn't matter. They all have that same code where you don't, you don't diagnose somebody unless you see them. They've been diagnosing this guy since day one. So, yeah. They all see the same thing. So it may be that it's just not possible. You know, and hiding is all he can do now. But we need to know that because if he can't do the job for that reason, well, honestly, no matter what we think about him, he has to be protected from himself at this point. Shouldn't his family want that for him? Shouldn't they love him enough to want to protect him if this is what's really going on? If what we're actually seeing is that, oh my God. Country has a right to know if their leader is impaired and not just a jerk, right? Because if that's all this is, <laughs> whatever, you know, little whatevs, but you know, if it's not, we have to be compassionate and we have to do what's best for him. No matter what we think of him. If he's impaired, we have to do something. Someone has to do something. Right? So, 
the energy right now is poor. We had poor last week, also had Puella or Puella. Poor is little boy energy, so it's impulse control problems. Uh, it's it's youthful, youthful folly. So if you're somebody that's being persuaded to do stupid things right now <laughs> out there when the protests, just understand that it's going to hurt your 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 bigger picture. All right. If you're somebody who's there who's truly protesting racial injustice and race and, and 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 police abuse. All right. And murdering of people and killing of people or whatever. The fact that they always get off. No, not always, but a lot of the time. If that's what you're doing, then do that. Keep it just about that. Keep that focus as narrow as possible. Stay peaceful. Do not struggle. Do not fight. I'm going to close here, but... I saw this video and I showed it to my husband. He thought it was hilarious. So there's this African-American guy and he's got to be like, I mean, I don't know. The The police that were around him were, were not as tall. He's a big guy. He's got a t-shirt on. You know, he's out outside at night there last night, I guess. I guess it was last night. And uh, I mean, they're profiling him, right? And he's just laughing calling him stupid, you know what's and all that. Turns out this dude is an undercover FBI officer. These foolish, he was doing nothing, nothing. And, you know, when they finally look in there and they see who he is, he's, you know, because they're covering their badge numbers, they're doing all that, right? He wants their badge numbers. He wants their, their business cards. He's going to talk to their supervisors over this. You can't profile. That's illegal. Yet look what's happening. You see, but but this whole thing was, I mean, it's like talk about instant karma. So my hope is that this incident educates these police officers a little bit. And here's the other thing. Stop shooting journalists. What the heck is that about? Who do you think you are? You know these people are journalists. It's obvious. They got press stuff on them. You know who they are, some of them. They're famous. They're anchors. They're on all the time. You know who they are. And you're shooting them? Really? Well. That's a little bit more than poor energy. That's poor energy run amok. That's probably more rubious energy. Or more carcer energy. Or more, more cottage or conus energy. But I'm going to tell you right now. You better knock it off. Again, don't let this moment stain you forever. That's all I'm saying. Because this is going to get fixed one of these days. It is. And when it does, there was another another thing. And, and again, you never know. It could have just been, but it looked like it was a report. You got some firefighter who's being racist, saying all this stuff, and then when confronted about it, he bursts into tears and says, I'm so sorry, I've, I've just ruined my life. Well, yeah, but you know, if you have a change of heart, if you finally find the truth that we are each the other side of self, that everyone we see is the other side of self, that we are all collectively one, allow it to change your heart. And if he's truly changed, if in that moment it all became clear, then bless that man. Because he's in a better place than a lot of us are. No matter how upset he might be, no matter how humi how much he might have humiliated himself, spiritually, he's in a better place than he was a second before. So, that's all I'm saying for a Monday. <laughs> that's it. <laughs>
anyway, thanks so much for watching. Click subscribe. I'd love you to do that. And to everybody that comes here and, and watches this and, and all of that, thank you so much. Um, I talked about this last week. I'm going to say it again. This is something I do that's completely outside my wheelhouse. And so I'm just doing it to challenge myself to support my blog and the work that I'm, the things I write and all of that. So. Uh, but at the same time, I've discovered that it's something that I like to do, and I like interacting this way with people, and I like um, sharing this stuff. Um, and so, so, so thank you so much for following my blog and for following this, and, and uh, come back tomorrow and uh, leave comments if you want to, if you've got other ideas about how this is interpreted for you, because this is how I interpret it doesn't mean you're going to do the same. You might look at this and it hits you a different way and it's like, oh no, it's this. Well, that's awesome. Put it down. And uh, if we can get a dialogue going, awesome. Even more awesome. So anyhow, we'll see you tomorrow. Be good to yourself. Be good to one another. And blessed be.